Hey, in the next few videos, we're going to be taking a look at the Entra portal. I gave a quick intro in my last video. I'll just link that at the top. If you're interested in learning what Entra is and how it compares to the Azure Active Directory Admin Center, um, join me in the next few videos and we'll be going through some of the changes. If you subscribe, you won't miss anything. First, we're going to do something pretty simple and that, well, it was pretty simple to do in the Azure AD interface. In a few moments, we'll take a look at the Entra version of that. I'm going to be adding a custom domain. First, I'll show you where it was in the old portal, and then we'll try and find it in the new portal, and we'll see how that process has changed. So just over to the Azure AD portal here. We're going to go to aad.portal.azure.com, choose Azure Active Directory, just scroll down to custom domain names. Now, as you can see here, I haven't got any custom domain names attached to this domain yet. But if I was to use the Azure AD portal, the old portal, to add a custom domain, it'd be pretty simple. All I have to do is just choose add a custom domain at the top there and type in the custom domain. In this case, I'm going to go with lastcoffee.co.uk and choose add domain. This then whisks us off to a wizard where we just have to type in some of these details from this page into the DNS management section of the hosting provider. Now that's pretty simple, right? I'm going to go ahead and delete that name that I've just created because I don't really want it. And we're going to refresh that to make sure it's definitely not there. So that was pretty simple, right? Very easy to get to straight down in to custom domain names. And you've got the wizard. Let's take a look at what we need to do in the Entra portal. We'll go to entra.microsoft.com and then Azure Active Directory. I'm going to scroll down to settings. And then within the settings section, you've got domain names. And then this looks very similar to the old portal. We're going to go ahead and choose add custom domain, type in the domain name, go with lastcoffee.co.uk, choose add domain. And as you can see, very, very similar to the experience we had before. But in this case, I do actually want to go ahead and add the domain. So we're going to head over to my hosting provider, which is GoDaddy. I'm going to just split these screens though, so we can do a bit of data entry. There we go. Okay, so from my GoDaddy account, it's simply a case of going to the domains and then choosing the ellipsis on this block here, because that will allow me to manage DNS. I choose manage DNS. Now I do actually already have uh, a text record pointing to at because I have had this domain attached to a different tenant in the past, but that's all deleted now. So in this case, I really want to just edit this, uh, this entry, this DNS entry in that portal. If you were creating this fresh, then you would just create as it's, as it says, the name would be at the data would be the the destination or point to address that it says on the left hand side there and the time to live is 3600 seconds or one hour so in this case very simple i'm just going to edit that type in the new details and choose save give that a few seconds for it to be updated now it says it can take up to 48 hours but in this case i really don't think it's going to take that long i'll give it a quick test and nope not quite ready yet try again in a few seconds And yeah, that's been verified. Okay, so we're all done. That's now been verified. And all I need, need to do now is just press make primary and make that my primary domain for this tenant. And that's it. I mean, that was the standard process for creating a custom domain. I used the entry portal, but really, as you can see, there was very little difference in that. Next time, I'm going to take a look at a different bit of the entry portal to see how that's changed, if it has at all. See you next time.